So guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Movement6 and welcome to a new video. Um, as a still relatively new and small channel, and not being my source of income here, but my source of fun, I need to make choices on what I present and what I make videos about. Um, I've got tons of content laying on my computer. <laughs> um, Rainbow Six, a personal update, I've got new things about Modern Warfare, but I need to make choices here. And the article I read yesterday, it's, it's from the 14th, today's the 15th, um, is something that's very close to the heart. Because I'm not an Xbox or a PlayStation or a Nintendo fanboy. I'm a gaming enthusiast. I like to play games. I want to be surprised by companies to provide me with experiences I've never seen before, with new titles, new IPs, new worlds to explore, new things to do, but also to improve skills in ways I've never seen before, right? Um, the reason why PlayStation 4 won has already been explained in a previous video I made. But it's still a hot topic and can't be ignored, of course. Because PlayStation 4 won, because they started off in a good way for the players. Although Xbox was trying to differentiate themselves at the time with saying, you can watch TV on our platform. They were trying to prove us something or give us something nobody cared about. We want to understand what games can be played on your system. And the way the whole launch was set up with the Xbox One was already a setup for failure process. They lost this battle, this generation, because of the software. Their lack of software. And they still lack it. And you can come out with the most powerful console in the world, the Xbox One X, which, to be fair, is the most powerful console out there because it's more powerful than the PlayStation Pro. You will not sell 100 million units across the board if you do not have a unique selling point that is differentiating yourself from the competitors. Now, on GameSpot, it's the article you're looking at, it's from GameSpot. I thought, finally, an interview with um, our, our, our big friend from uh, PlayStation, or, or from, uh, from Xbox, apologies for that. Um, and I can finally see some more in-depth news about why I should buy an Xbox over a PlayStation, or even both, at launch, because I don't want to miss out on any of the fantastic new things they're going to provide us. Now, they start off with Xbox Scarlet will focus on improved playability with higher frame rates and lower loading times. Okay, fine. You could also slam a Sony press release on this because that's exactly the same thing they're pushing as well. Um, Xbox Scarlet will focus on improved playability with higher frame rates and lower loading times. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Listen, we don't care. I've, I've yet to come across someone who makes an issue about loading times. I come from the Commodore 64 time. We had a loading time of 25 minutes sometimes, right? 25 freaking minutes. And now they're discussing lower loading times. That seemed to be a thing of the new generation. We're solving the loading times. Who brought up the issue? Yes, with Detroit become human on a base PlayStation 4, you need to wait sometimes 30 to 45 seconds. Did it bother me? No. Did it ruin my experience? No. So, okay, you know, okay. Higher frame rates. We already know that. It's going to run 60 frames and a minimum solid across the board in 4K. So what are you talking about? Well, okay, fine. Let's, let's just read on here, okay? And let's see if they are going to give us anything that is going to you as a consumer, us as a community, the reason to buy the new Xbox and make sure that they are going to push for the 100 million units sold. It's not all about making sure you have the best looking graphics. No shit, Sherlock. I'm still playing the Resident Evil 1 and 2, the original ones. They look awful by current day standards. They look freaking awful, but they are fantastic games. Okay, well, it's, it's an article by Laura Parker, Kevin Knesevich, I think. It's from yesterday, GameSpot. And... At E3 2019, Xbox gave us uh, a taste of the next generation Xbox codename Project Scarlet. While the company didn't showcase any of the actual hardware, it did reveal some interesting facts of the system. We know it's boosted solid state drive. Okay, 
much like Sony's PS5. Okay, here we go. No differentiator here. Will be approximately four times as powerful as the Xbox One X. Okay, fine. Nothing new in the sun because the new PlayStation will be also four times as more powerful than the PlayStation 4 Pro. And that the, the machine that's currently the most powerful game console. Okay, we know that. Projects call it added horsepower will undoubtedly allow developers to produce some stunning title. But visuals aren't the only aspect of gaming that Microsoft is looking to improve. Then what are you going to improve? We know that it it's going to be more powerful. So the graphics are going to boost up. So yeah, we couldn't expect anything less. Okay, Bill Spencer. This is the guy you just saw in the picture in an exclusive in-depth interview. I think the area that... I think the area that we really want to focus on the next generation is frame rate and playability of the games. <laughs> so actually you're saying that your current console is shit, it's unplayable and the frame rate sucks. That's what you're saying here. The next generation frame rate and playability of the games. I didn't have any issue with playability and frame rate of the current generation. I don't. Ensuring that the game load in incredibly fast ensuring that the game is running on the highest frame rate possible we're also the windows company so we see so we see the work that goes on for pc and the work developers are doing people love 60 frames per second no you idiot microsoft is a software company i want to understand what software you're developing that you are going to run 60 frames per second solid we already know that we know the 4K, we know the horsepower, it's going to be four times more. I could have done this interview you're doing right now. Microsoft is a Windows company. Windows is software, it's an operating system you run on a bunch of hardware. You know that operating system is the tiny little thing you screwed up with the Xbox One in general. It's one of the most horrible operating systems I've ever seen in my life. What are you going to do? Okay, well, let's read on. The thing that's interesting is, can you see these guys? Yeah, you can see it. Is this generation, we're really focused on 4K visuals and how we bring both movies through 4K Blu-ray, video streaming, and with the Xbox One X allowing games to run 4K visuals. Fantastic. But playability is probably the bigger focus for us this generation. How fast do games load? Do I feel I can get the games as fast as possible while it's playing? And how does it feel? How does it feel? You don't have your wife in your hands? Jesus hates Christ. And as fast as possible while it's playing, fine, you've got, a, you've got a machine that's four times more powerful. You've got more cores, more threats, so you can do a lot more in the background while you're playing so that you're downloading quicker. You also have a tiny little thing called an internet connection. I live in the Netherlands. I believe that we've got the highest coverage and the best internet in the world, right? Everybody is connected here. We run... Teddy strong internet across the board in this country, but you've got a huge amount of people living globally who don't have access to these stable networks. So downloading on your machine is fine, but it's the internet connection that can screw that up. How fast do games load? Yeah, I don't care, it's 30, 45 seconds right now, right? Where are this, the games, the software made? Let's read on. Microsoft isn't just looking towards the future with Project Scarlet either. The company also wants to ensure that players still have access to all their older games. Wait, wait, just, just wait. I'm glad I just have done some, some running on 45 minutes, so I'm a bit tired, exhausted, right? So the stress is gone, a bit more calm, but we're now going to talk about backwards compatibility. You know the thing that... Sony is also talking about that. Sony is talking about backwards compatibility of the PlayStation 4 be running on a PlayStation 5. Even PlayStation 3 games can be run on a PlayStation 5. And I think they're even thinking about running the software of the best sell console of all times, the PlayStation 2, on PlayStation 5. So we're not doing anything new. Whereas the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch both forfend backwards compati compatibility, the Xbox One has built up an impressive library of backwards compatible games so again you're not, you're just building upon something we already know you're not solving anything you're not bringing anything fantastic you know kudos and i must say kudos xbox one it's fantastic to run my xbox 360 which is in the background it's over there it still does it but it's fantastic that i can do it downstairs 
Just put in a disk, it downloads some things, and I can play it. Fantastic. Kudos. So you're not solving anything, you're just building on what you already know. The Xbox One is building. Huh? We really like the perception and the use that I've seen through the Xbox One backwards compatibility program, making sure that all four generation of content, so the original Xbox One games that run on the Xbox One today, the OG Xbox, the 360, 360 games that run on your Xbox One, your Xbox One games, and the new generation games all run the next platform. Who gives a fucking shit? It's fantastic, but it's not a unique selling point anymore, my friend. Furthermore, the Xbox One titles are predominantly third-party development titles that are also available on PlayStation 4. So I can run my Gears of War 5 on my new Xbox One Scarlet. Wow. Okay. We want to make sure that the generations can play with each other. So if you happen to adopt the next generation early and somebody stacks back, that if the games are on both platforms, you're able to cross-gen play. Well, okay, great. Okay, let's see if we can find anything that is differentiating them from the competition. Because up until now, I'm not reading anything new than other than what Sony does, we can do it too. Anything, another thing that we will be a little new for us is the fact that we want to also respect the compatibility of the controllers. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so I can... Does that mean that we have a an option to not buy the default controller you're providing with every system? So if, if this new console costs, let's say, $600, right? Can I just walk into a store and say, I already own a bunch of Xbox controllers. So take the controller out of the box and here you got $520? Is that how this, this shit works? <sighs> okay. Let's see if we can find anything about software, right? Um, blah, blah, blah. So this is about controllers. Project Scarlet is slated to arrive holiday 2020 with Halo Infinite as launch Tyler. title. Tyler. <laughs> wow. Halo. Again. <laughs> Halo. You know, it would be so massive if Xbox marketing director would say, listen, uh, Spencey Spence, we, we've, we've done our shit with you can watch TV, nobody cared. We have brought zero new software titles that mean anything, that won anything in the market in terms of awards. We've lost the battle again against Sony. They've sold 100 plus million units. And that's not because of the hardware. Yes, the operating system that is running on top of the hardware is fantastic and even way better than ours. But they predominantly won with new fresh IPs that cost a stir in the market, or they took their own IPs and took it in a different direction. But that was not the main driver. The new IPs were the main driver. So, Spencey Spence, your assignment is going to be, you're going to find new studios that are going to bring IPs that are going to come out at launch, and I want a minimum of 12 new names I can pronounce to the market already that is going to cause a stir in the market. That we're going to give Sony a run for their money. I know Halo, Forza, Gears. You're going to bring them again, aren't you? You're going to bring them again. I can already tell you, Sony is going to destroy you. They're going to destroy you, Spencer. Okay, so they've mentioned one software title, and now they discuss a number of other topics in our interview, including Microsoft Cloud Gaming Initiative xCloud. You know, sometimes I wonder if these guys are actually excited about these things, or from a corporate standpoint, they're told to be excited. There's a huge difference, you know. Google is going cloud gaming. Sony is going to cloud gaming. If I would be you guys, I would go back. And I'm more than willing to come to anywhere you guys are based and tell you from a gamer perspective what we need. 
and that is we need a launch process, a build up the hype process that says this is what we're going to bring in new, fresh products for players. We're players. We're not hardware players, we're software. We play software, we run software, and we want to be entertained. This is what we're going to bring in entertaining titles. You can't buy them at Sony, you can't buy them at Nintendo, you can play them here. You can play them even if you own a PC, you only have to install it on your Xbox or whatever the hell you do with it, and you can play it on your PC and on your Xbox anywhere you want, even on your mobile, I don't care. You know, But the software needs to sh show off here. And then build that with services. Oh, yeah, we're going to do cloud gaming. And this is what it's going to mean for you as a gamer. I don't care. You say cloud gaming initiative, xCloud. What is it? What does it do? Why is it so important to me as a consumer? doesn't say anything. You're cloud gaming. I don't know. I'm, I'm a guy from the past. I like those shiny boxes, those green boxes or those blue boxes or those red boxes that can, I can show off with saying, listen, this is the software I own. This is software. This is what I run on that system. And, oh, can you only run it on that system? I can only run it on that system. You know, this is Luigi Mansion. Oh, wow. That's a good game. Luigi Mansion is a fantastic game, by the way. This is Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Oh, wow, wow. Oh, I can run it on that machine? Yeah, you can't run it on that machine. You can't. They don't have it. That is unique. And okay, dear Mr. Consumer, we're going to have cloud gaming. We have 4K. We're going to scale up to 8K. We've got 60 frames per second. We've got no load times. Fantastic. If you would bring new IPs, new software to the market that is, that is so groundbreaking... I don't care if I got a 30 or 45 second load time. It's ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. If this is the, the new way, or this is, well, I would say the recycled way of how you guys are going to launch the Xbox, then I wish you kudos. I've already pre-ordered my PlayStation between my ears. I already did. There is no need for me at this stage to be hyped about Xbox One Scarlet. It runs 4K, so does the PlayStation 5. It has minimum 60 frames per second, so does the PlayStation 5. It's got zero to no load times, so does the PlayStation 5. What do you have that PlayStation doesn't? Cloud gaming? No. 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 Shiny piece of hardware? No. Oh, you got your controllers I can take with me. Wow. So... Guys, I'm I've I'm done with my rant here. I'm really done because I'm I'm completely fed up with this guy. I'm completely fed up with Xbox. If this is going to be this is going this is proven to be the first generation. I'm not going to be a, a upcoming generation. I'm not going to buy an Xbox. I'm just not. There is no reason up until now to be excited for this. It's just an Xbox One on steroids with no games. Period. That's what it's going to bring. And I'm really keen on what you guys think. Are, are you going to buy the Xbox and why? Are you going to buy the PlayStation 5 or why? And, and what's your take on this whole development? What are you excited about? Because I'm not excited about this. Now, guys, thank you for all the support. I didn't do the growing habit at the beginning. Uh, apologies for that because I was really in a rant mode here. But I really appreciate all your support. And thank you for all the guys who subbed this week. If you haven't subbed, please do so. Put on the notification. And I will check back to you as soon as possible. Get back to the madness, movement six out.